Hello, this is Wampire, uh, here to explain my self-defense system um, as simple as I can. Okay, so uh, in this particular instance, I want to make it very specific. So the bad guy has a knife, and uh, they're, they want to use the knife against you. Okay, so they, they want to attack you with, an, with the knife. So the idea here is to use something like this, okay, a purse, a belt bag, whatever, but it's not empty hand. You're going to take this out and you're going to use this to deflect against this that's coming at you. Boom. You know, they're swinging this, okay, and you're using this to deflect it like that. Boom. Okay. Um, an example I could give you guys is, is just think like a buckler shield, okay? So that, what does that come from? And, and you guys uh, may or may not know my background. My main style is Kia, which is the Filipino martial arts. It's Kali, Eskrima, and Arnis, okay? And the way that we train that, is with sticks so my partner has a stick and they're coming at me and I also have a single stick so it's single stick versus single stick and I'm using this I'm holding it with both hands and I'm defending okay why both hands because I'm gonna hold this with both hands so boom 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 so there is a connection there okay and why do you guys start with the stick well the stick exaggerates the movements. So we're actually starting with the easiest weapon. And as we get better, we can go to uh, smaller and smaller. So in the meantime, the stick is, is what we want, okay? Uh, of course, you could use a training knife, but it's going to be a lot harder. So that's why we, we start with a stick. You got this much to protect, whereas to with this, you can see it's, it's a lot smaller. So it is harder, okay? So we start with the stick, and uh, we get used to it, and we're, we're working on the skill. We're developing this skill so that, you know, when the bad guy comes at you with a knife, you're able to deflect those incoming strikes coming at you. Okay, so that is um, that is a big part of what I teach. Okay, so we start with the sticks, but our main goal right there is, like I said, the bad guy to be using something, a knife, something like that, and you to be using something like this to deflect against it. And from my findings... As long as you're in long range, this is possible. Okay, so all you guys got to do is test this out and see for yourselves. Is it possible for you to do it? So if you practice it, and it doesn't take 10, 20 years to get this down, uh, much, much shorter than that, um, I would say in six months you could get this solid. Okay. Um, to where it becomes something that you can feel like, hey, I could try to use this in a street situation. Now, everybody's different because, like, for example, that skill doesn't cover are you going to be calm enough to do it? Are you going to be able to uh, um, see the situation and use awareness to have time to take this out and, and things like that. That doesn't cover that. You know, this we're just working on the actual skill of this is already in your hand and the other guy already has his out and is attacking you. So so that's all this skill is. But I'm telling you that this skill, if you practice this in six about six months time, average person, you practice this, you know, dedicated at least once a week, you will be able to um, to use the skill. 
I'm, I'm not, I can't guarantee success, but it is definitely possible. And uh, it was possible for me and it was possible for my students, okay? Um, in training, I'm not saying that we went out and tested out in real life and had someone, you know, come at us with a knife. No, but in practice, it, it was, uh, it was successful, okay? Now, the other thing is, as we got closer in distance, so this, this worked in long range. As we got closer in distance, the failure rate increased incredibly. Okay, so that's something you guys need to understand. So this is a long range skill. And, and that's really, it's based off of, like I said, in uh, modern Arnis, I learned it as the force to force block. So they attack, and I block it like this, okay? Even though it's called a block, I mean, I'm, I'm really aggressively going, going to it. And uh, I know a lot of people don't like the double hand, you know, but like I said, it's, it's grabbing this. It's more secure if you grab it with one hand than just, just single hand like this. And um, there's variations, you know. Uh, sometimes you may not get here. You may just do this, you know, or you might, you might have a backup like this. It, it just, there are variations, just like with a stick. You don't have to be like this. You could be like this. You know, you could be like this. So there are plenty of variations, but the main idea is to do the force to force block in long range, do that with your partner and get in the repetitions. Okay. And if you want to make it more realistic than have them, you know, increase the force. Of course, safety has to be the most important thing. So you have to do it controlled. Uh, and that's why I recommend drill instead of just go full contact. But, um, you know, there's many things you can do to start making it um, closer to reality where you, you could make it scarier. <laughs> there's plenty of things that you can do. So anyway, that's the main skill. And, and that is for long range. Okay. So now we got to talk about close range because I said we don't do medium range. We do close range. What's the logic behind that? The logic behind that is in medium range, there's just simply not enough time and I'm already in reach of the other person. Okay, so to be able to defend or block or catch or do anything in, in medium range, it's, it's just, it's possible, but you have to rely on them to either mess up or you have to be way better than them. So those are two things that I don't want to rely on. Those are two things that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of luck right there and, and you're relying on their incompetence. So I, I don't like that. I'd rather rely on me doing something right than them doing something wrong. Okay. So, um, in medium range, it's it's just a simple matter of imagine someone doing knife boxing. Okay, so knife. What's knife boxing? Well, they're they're throwing boxing punches, but at the end of the punch, there's a blade. A lot of times, it's a karambit. So, it is a bladed punch that's coming at me. Okay, if I also had a knife and I I returned, did the same thing that we're we're boxing but with knives, right? And if you watch any boxing match, both fighters get hit, both fighters exchange. That happens in just about every boxing match that has ever occurred on the planet Earth. Therefore, if you do that with a knife, you could just imagine you exchange with a knife, you're, you're both going to get cut up bad. So that's why um, we don't deal with medium range. We, we skip it. Okay. Okay, so we don't do medium range. Close range, so it's either long range or close range. So what is the close range skill? I've already said this stuff and you guys, you know, maybe like, okay, okay, vampire, you've said that many times, but what exactly do you do in close range? We get what you do in long range, okay? It's based off of the force to force block and you're deflecting, boom, boom, you know, you're, you're deflecting their knife attack, you're swatting it down, okay, we get that. What exactly do you do in close range? Okay, so trying to simplify as much as possible and also give you the reasons. 
So in, in close range, okay, when, when the person takes out the knife, right, and there's a pause, so, so they, or, or they're going for the knife. So at this moment, or they just took out and they're waiting, okay, or, or they showed it to you and, and there's a pause, okay, that's what we're looking for, okay. If they take it out and then they, they, they immediately start going into this kind of stuff, we do what I just said in long range. That's when you do this. That's that's when you do that and you, you get out of there. You go to long range and you boom, boom, you, you not let them stab you. Okay. So if the knife is in motion, we do what I just said the long range stuff. If the knife is not in motion, then we grab the wrist. We grab it and we control it. Okay. So what I just said right there should be huge, should be mega huge. Okay. I, I haven't seen anyone on YouTube say to any of the self-defense instructors, knife combat instructors. I, I haven't seen them say that. I'm saying it to you. Okay. I, they don't have to agree with me. They could have a totally different system. I'm not saying theirs doesn't work. That's fine. But I'm telling you right now that this is a big, it should be a big eye opener. Okay. When the knife is in motion, they're already doing this. Then you got to get to long range and, you, and we're doing this. Okay. If it's not in motion, that split second where they took it out and you're both looking at each other like, oh crap, this just got serious. That gap, that time gap right there, that, that split second pause, that's where you got to do this. You got to control it, okay? The thing is, that time gap, there's, there's a little bit of leeway, okay? So it might be right before they start doing this. Or it might be right here early where they're still going for the weapon and the weapon's not out yet. So so there, there is a time frame for you. It's not just here only or here only or here only. It's it's not where, where they have the knife up against your neck. You know, it, it's not just that, okay? Um, th there is a little bit of leeway in time, okay? But the idea, the, the most important idea there is... You're going to grab their wrist that has the knife, okay? So the hand that has the knife, I don't, I don't care what grip it is, it's in. You're going to grab, you're going to grab the wrist, okay? You grab it when it's not in motion. That's super important. If it's already attacking you, this to me is like you're trying to, um, you're basically trying to catch a punch and no no even if you're able to catch it mid 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 stab mid thrust you you're super athletic or they're just not that good and they they come at you boom and you catch it we already know they could and this arm's gone right there it's cut right there okay so we don't we don't do that okay we don't do that when you grab the wrist it has to be already not i made it it has to be paused not in motion okay so that that's an easy way to know when do i go for it when do i not go for it so if they're already doing this i i don't try to grab it at that point no i don't grab it i'm 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 doing that. I'm getting out of there. I'm creating distance. That's what I'm doing. Okay. But if this, and I'm like, whoa, 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 but we're close enough. And the guy's like, hey, you know, and he's doing this and he's just threatening and he's not stabbing or cutting me yet. Okay. And I'm like, hey, dude, you won. You won, man. You won. At that point, I can go in and grab. Now there, there's something that can help me because this this grab right here, this grab, 
it can be difficult. Now I'm seeing people, so I got to make this very clear. This is very, very important to me. Like I said, I, this should be a bomb that I just dropped on your consciousness. <laughs> this, this, this should be, well, I'm, I'm not trying to um, be egotistical, but what I'm trying to say is this is a big deal. This is, when you're taking notes, this is where you highlight it, okay? So you only grab the wrist when the arm is not in motion, okay? Not in motion. If it's in motion, we don't do that, okay? We, we don't go for that grab. I've seen people on YouTube, you know, they teaching the grab in motion. In fact, a lot of them, a lot of instructors do. And pretty much every instructor I, I've seen has never said what I just said to you guys right now, which is you only grab it when it's not in motion. Okay, so I'm making that black and white clear. So this is based off of my own experiments with my students. That's all you got to do. Test it out and be honest, be honest, you know, if this was real, would they have cut me badly? Yes or no? And the, the answer most likely is yes. So that's why you don't do it. You don't do it when the hand's in motion. So right when they took it out and they're waiting, boom, that's, that's when you do. And even then it's hard. Okay. So I am telling you guys, I don't believe in they coming in and you grab it right there. No. No, I don't believe in that, okay? I don't recommend that. It's possible. It is possible, but very difficult, not worth it, okay? I don't suggest it, okay? So when, when they come in like that, don't even try to grab it. Swat it down. Let it cut this and not you, okay? But... If it is paused, we want this control, okay? And when we come in for that control, we pin the arm. So you, there's, you could do it one-handed, two-handed, or use your forearm and press against, press against their arm, press, like trap it, jam it, and then grab the wrist, okay, simultaneously. So I, I come in with this pressing down on their arm and then this grabbing the wrist. So simultaneously. Okay. So that's where your trapping techniques come from. Or, or that's where I translated the, tr the traditional trapping techniques for my self-defense. Okay. So that, that's where it made sense to me. And that's where I like, oh, okay, I can use these trappings. So that, that's the way that I interpret it. Okay. So... Once you grab the wrist, okay, and that's what we want. We want that control because if you don't grab the wrist, it's free to stab you. And if, if you're in close range and you don't grab the wrist and you go for a, I don't know, a Muay Thai head clinch or you go for a, a arm lock or, or you know, um, underhook or overhook or, or whatever you, for a clinch move, whatever you do, this arm is free to stab you and cut you and disembowel you and whatever it wants. So it just doesn't make sense to me to, I don't care what grappling style you know, to, do, to be doing that because you're, you're going to be stabbed up. Okay, so instead, grab a hold of this so that they cannot cut and stab you. You're, you're stopping it. And then the next thing is, because right there, you end up in a tug of war situation. Okay, so right there you're you're in a strength versus strength situation with the opponent, and that's definitely what we don't want. So from this, you go to that. You go to a wrap. Okay, so from here, this is the grab. You're gonna wrap immediately. So from here, boom. You you're gonna wrap up their arm. I don't care what grip, so the guy could have a knife right. So you go from here to a boom, a wrap. You wrap that arm up, okay? You wrap it. The wrapping is more secure because it's against your body instead of just relying on your grip alone. So from, from this, 
to boom. You could e you can't, I'm not gonna say easily, but quickly. Keyword quickly. So it's it's kinda the, the best way I could describe it is like parkour, uh, urban free flow, where they're they're hopping from one ledge to the next like that. It's it's an explosive quick jump. So from here, quickly jump into a rep. Okay. And that is much more secure than just holding on to the wrist like this. So th this is a tug of war, okay? Or this is a tug of war, right? But once you wrap it, now they're, if they do pull me, they're strong enough to pull me, they're pulling around my whole body. So they're gonna get tired much faster, even if they're mega, mega strong, you know, it's, it's gonna tire them out. And, and more importantly, I'm safe, okay? So if, if I have it wrapped around like this, you can, you can see they can try to cut me here, but it's minimal. It's really minimal. And, and I, I know people like to say in a knife cut, you're going to get cut. I hate that. I hate hearing that. Okay. This cut is minimal. This cut coming in and you're trying to grab it and you get cut, that's not minimal. And I, so th there's a big difference. So when the people are saying, oh, you're going to get cut in a... In, in a knife fight and they're trying to catch this they're trying to catch it they're, tr they're trying to catch this this knife this knife coming in like this that cut is not minimal once I wrap the arm and then they're they're, they're trying let right there they're trying to cut me that's minimal so difference right there please please understand that okay so once you wrap the arm what do you do once you wrap the arm now we go into ultimately what i call wrenching okay and wrenching is how do i define wrenching wrenching is basically a joint lock wrenching is your joint locks but it's joint locks for the stand-up clinch when i see people trying to do standing joint locks. So in Kia, Kali Eskrima Arnis, we learned something called lock flow. And in lock flow, you can go in through a million different joint locks while standing. Okay, not ground stuff, standing stuff. You could do all these, you know, wrist locks, elbow locks, shoulder locks. You know, you could, you could do all kinds of different wrist locks, okay? Uh, arm locks and, and uh, even neck cranks and stuff like that. You could do all kinds of stuff like that, okay? In full contact, you can't do any of it. Why? And, and my answer to that, how I solved that was you have to wrench it. So if you try to do it like the way you do it on the ground, where you squeeze and then you tap the person out, that's not going to happen. So all the standing joint locks have to be done in a wrenching fashion, which is more like a strike. So you're striking the joint. Why is this important? This, this is important because remember, you, you have the, the bad guy has a knife and you've wrapped their arm, right? Okay, and, and they're still doing this kind of thing. And the moment they get this out, you're in danger. So the idea there is we have to disarm the guy, which means take this away from them, okay? How do you take it away from them? You, you take it away by compromising their structure and their grip. In other words, if they're in a, you see, they, they got a solid grip on the knife and they have a solid structure, you're not gonna get this knife out. You're not, okay? But if you put them in a compromised, see, my structure's weak now. So you put me in a weak, a weak structure, then it starts to affect my grip. My, my grip is, it's difficult to hold on strong, okay? So once this happens and my, and my grip, my structure's weak, my grip is weak, now, you could get me in a joint lock 
And the joint lock that I recommend from here for the disarm specifically, not the wrenching. The wrenching you could do, you, I don't care what joint you wrench, but the idea is we want to ultimately, like I said, the, weaken the structure. I mean, if you make me, so if I'm here, I have a strong structure, but if you do this to me, okay, my structure is getting weak. It's, it's hard, right? And then next you got to uh, weaken my grip. Okay, so I don't, I don't care how it is. You got to weaken my grip. And once you weaken my grip, now you can go into that finger lock. Okay, you can start twisting the fingers. Why the fingers? Well, A, so that you could get this out. <laughs> because that, that's what's holding on. The fingers is what's ultimately holding the weapon. But, but that's A. B is because... When we're talking about, I expect the person on the street to be stronger than me, bigger, stronger, and meaner. So then how, how can I attack their joints successfully? Well, it has to be their weakest joint, not their strongest, biggest joint, but the weakest. Okay, so if I attack their legs and they're bigger, stronger, and meaner, I may not be able to, you know, knee bar them or you know, heel hook them or, or, uh, and, and I have met and, and grappled with opponents that they were just too big. You know, I, I literally, I just, um, here, let me show you guys. Yeah. The, the neck was, was just too big and I, I just could, did not feel like I could, I could choke them out even though I took their back and I had to choke on and everything. And, and I was just like, that, the neck was like all muscle and I was just like, oh man, this, I'm not going to be able to get this. I tried and it's like, I'm getting tired. Um, and then same with heel hooks. I've, I've done it to a guy who was like, I think he was six foot four. Got him in a heel hook. And I mean, uh, hey, I should win the match right there. But the foot was just huge. And I, I, I just, I was like, I'm doing nothing here. I'm wasting my own energy. So... But the finger, the fingers, even on a bigger, stronger guy, compared to their other joints, that's doable. So that's why we go for the finger, okay? Finger lock. And you break their finger, it's going to be very difficult for them to hold on and hopefully very difficult for them to continue wanting to, to attack you. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that is my system in a nutshell. So that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.